Have you ever wondered to yourself, hmm, those avionics are pretty expensive, I wonder if I can make those by myself? Well, the answer is, yes, you can. About a month ago, I traveled down to Florida uh, to the Sun and Fun Fly-In. I had two main goals in mind. Number one, I wanted to talk to the uh, engine manufacturer that I want to put in my Sonics, that being uh, the Aero Momentum. And secondly, I wanted to look at all of the avionics that were on display there at the show. And as I looked at all those avionics, I came to realize that uh, they're really expensive. You could easily spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on on a really nice panel. So that begs the question: uh, Is it possible to build your own avionics suite? Um, and the simple answer is yes. You you definitely can. If you look at makerplane.org, it's an open source set of project or project of projects. So these gentlemen uh, put together an open source uh, derivative of CAN. It's called the CAN Fix standard. Let's go ahead and take a look. I've got a laptop set up over here. Uh, after we've done that, we maybe we'll take a look at this little Raspberry Pi based one here that I've got sitting next to me. It doesn't perform very well, the small one. The only Raspberry Pi I had on the shelf was a, an old Raspberry Pi 2. Um, they're really old and they don't perform very well uh, for graphics and things like that. So in this case, I'm just gonna run it on my laptop so you can see what it would look like in a higher performing uh, computer. Um, so let's go take a look. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start here. Um, this is um, what's called the Pi Ethys. It's a, it's a Python program uh, that runs um, on a Linux uh, kernel. You can see on here there's all kinds of uh, data that's moving around. Um, for example, um, you can see the speed tape right here. Um, it's just going up and down. Um, you can see the true airspeed reading here is going up and down. You can see their turn coordinator is a little cocked to one side. Um, you can see our ball moving back and forth. Over here you can see I've got uh, RPM is showing uh, 1279 RPM. Um, oil pressure, it says we've got zero right now, but there's nothing that's actually pushing that data, so that makes sense. Um, it says that our oil temperature right now is 88.3 degrees. Um, that's, <laughs> that's pretty interesting because uh, that's exactly the same temperature it is as it is in my garage right now. Um, that temperature probe is actually being read from this little tiny temperature probe on this uh, Arduino device. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, you can see here I've got my max cylinder head temperature is 391.5 degrees. Um, and if I were to go, for example, down here and click on the uh, engine management system, um, you can see these uh, numbers here. Um, so I have one of them reporting at 63 degrees, one at 345, one at 293, and one at 391. Again, the max uh, is 391. That's the same thing as we saw over here on our uh, primary flight display, 391.5. If you look really closely here at the uh, altimeter tape, it's moving just a little tiny bit up and down. Again, that's another, uh, this little sensor that's sitting on this Arduino board here is actually a thermometer and a barometer uh, all built into the, uh, the same sensor. All this information is coming through this USB cable. This USB cable is plugged into a CAN interface. The CAN interface is uh, then wired into a CAN bus. That's what these two, the blue and the green wire here represent. Um, if you're not familiar with CAN, um, most of your cars, um, boats, um, in some cases airplanes even, uh, they use CAN, a CAN interface to communicate with all your sensors and things like that. Um, it has two wires on it. There's a, there's a high and a low. Um, so in this case, I have it wired up so that uh, everything that's on the blue wire um, is, is the low side and everything on the green wire is the high side. You can plug as many devices as you want into this bus um, as long as you have the throughput for it. Um, and it's sort of plug and play. Like whatever you plug in there, it kind of broadcasts out to the whole network. If there's somebody that needs to know what the information is that is being published, it'll gather that and, and use it. So in this case, um, I have this little Arduino device here. Um, this is a single board that has a, a CAN bus built into it, but it also has other pins that I can do other things with. Um, so in this case, I have the I2C bus um, right here plugged into this little temperature slash barometer uh, probe. Um, it has a single little chip on there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that into focus or not, but that little tiny square chip right there, rectangular chip, um, does both temperature and uh, pressure, atmospheric pressure. 
that is being collected here, pushed down through these wires where the Arduino um, has code on it that translates that um, and then pushes it out to the CAN bus. So this is a, just one of the wires going into the CAN, to the CAN network here over into this bus where it's being collected here and then drawn back up through the wire here and then into our display. Um, so most of the information you see changing on the screen right now it's being published by this little Arduino device here. It has both mock data and real data coming across the wire over to this FE. Um, the RPM here, that's uh, just, again, numbers that I'm pushing across the wire. Um, the oil temperature here, it says 88.7, and uh, that's actually the temperature in my garage where I'm standing at right now. It's 88.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's keep an eye on that sensor, and I'm gonna put my finger over the top of the temperature, uh, over the top of this thermometer, and you'll see that that oil temperature is beginning to rise. I'm gonna let go now, and it will start to decrease as the uh, air temperature cools down that thermometer. If you've been following along with my YouTube channel at all, uh, you know that I uh, have built a 3D printable um, angle of attack sensor that eventually will report back over Bluetooth to your uh, Android cell phone or tablet or whatever, and will show um, what your angle of attack is in the cockpit. All right. Um, I said, well, this would be a good spot for me to start, I think, is maybe I can implement my angle of attack sensor into this uh, ecosystem um, that you've already built that is just this incredible piece of software. Um, and the guy I was talking to, uh, Phil, he's one of the main developers over there. Uh, he was very uh, amenable to that. And he said, that's a great idea. Why don't you try it out and see if you can make it work? Um, and so that's uh, what I've done. Um, this is just a, a copy of my angle of attack device. Inside of here is a uh, absolute rotary encoder. Um, inside of that is, on top of that is a little uh, diametrically uh, magnetized magnet. As I turn this, this uh, shaft here, it actually turns that magnet down underneath over the top of the sensor and it can tell exactly which direction it's pointing using a magnetic field uh, within this little uh, white part down here on the bottom. That in turn is published out over the top uh, of these wires here into um, my I2C connection into my Arduino. Uh, this is an Arduino Nano. Uh, it's probably a, a $5 uh, microcontroller here. Um, that microcontroller then uh, publishes that information. It translates it into a CAN message and then pushes that over these wires, um, an SPI interface, um, out to this um, CAN interface, which then publishes out to these wires, which we're now going to plug into our CAN bus over here. And at this point, we are connected into the CAN bus, um, and that's all there is to it. Um, this obviously isn't powered yet. I'm just gonna plug this wire into the Arduino device and you'll see that it starts blinking here. Um, every time that blinks, it's sending a CAN message. I have it set right now, I think, to send every, I don't know if it's every 150 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. I'm not really positive off the top of my head, but it's probably every 100 milliseconds. Um, so 10 times a second, it's sending a, a, a message, um, and it's publishing the direction of this wind vane right now over the CAN bus into here, which is being collected and then pushed to our EFIS screen. So let's uh, go over here to the EFIS screen. And as I move this, you should be able to see the angle of attack sensor moving up and down. Um, one of the things, if you remember from my uh, videos about the uh, angle of attack sensor, um, you'll remember that um, you have to be able to set certain um, certain angles uh, on your sensor so that uh, you know when you're gonna stall and when you're flying level. So there's, there's several ways to do this. Um, one way that you can do it is you could just put a button um, on this device itself and have that coming up to the panel and you could then you know just push a button on your panel someplace. Another option might be um, to just have a button on your screen here. Like if I were to go into the AOA, AOA screen here, maybe I could put a button on here to adjust um, your, um, you know, you push the button to say, okay, now I'm level flight or this is my angle just before I'm gonna stall or whatever, that's another option. Um, in this case, what I've done is I have uh, created another uh, device here. So this will be my fourth CAN bus device that I'm gonna put on this network. 
see if I can get this all into the screen here at the same time. And uh, again, I'll uh, plug in my low and high. So we'll go low first and then high. And now this device is connected to our network and you'll see I have three buttons here wired up. Um, this white button here will set um, my, my level angle. And when I push that, it'll actually send a CAN message over the CAN bus. Nobody else is listening to that particular message except for this Arduino here. It's listening specifically for a, a specific CAN bus message that says reset yourself to zero. Um, and the cool thing about these Arduinos is they actually have an EEPROM um, chip on it, which means you can basically save information um, indefinitely um, as part of the chip. And then when you reboot it the next time, that information is still there. Think of it like a really small hard drive where you can keep very small pieces of data that might be important for your, whatever your sensor is. So in this case, if I push this white button, it sends a signal to reset to zero. That goes over the CAN bus, is received over here where this, this CAN bus is listening, and then it writes whatever value is on here as my level flight uh, angle. Um, so let's go ahead and do that really quick. I'm just going to plug in this device here. And you'll notice that this one is flashing like crazy because it's sending messages every, uh, you know, 100 milliseconds or whatever. This one isn't flashing at all. It's not doing anything. You see it flash a little tiny bit when I hit the button. Um, and so basically what that's doing is when I, when I push this button, it's just sending a signal saying, hey, you, set your, set your zero uh, level flight angle to whatever the uh, sensor is telling you right now. That's, that's going to be your forever level sensor. This device says, okay, well, whatever you are right now, that's going to be zero now. And then it writes it to the EEPROM chip that's on this board. And then the next time you restart it, it's there in, indefinitely until you reset it again. Let's watch over here on the screen while I do this. Let's see if I can get this to all show up in the screen here at the same time. So let's say that we have our uh, angle of attack up kind of high, like right there it's at 9.9 .9 degrees or something like that. If I push this white button again, that's going to drop all the way down to zero. And that's actually been written to the EEPROM here on this uh, sensor device and then it's set for good. You don't have to do it again. All right, and then one last thing. Um, obviously, you're probably not going to be using a laptop in your cockpit. Um, you're probably going to want a small screen of some kind. Um, in my case here, um, I've gone ahead and purchased a small touch screen um, that has an interface on the rear of it. Um, and I've been able to connect a Raspberry Pi um, onto it. This is a bit of an older Raspberry Pi. It's a, a Pi 2, um, I think it is. Yeah, Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. Um, it's quite a bit older and uh, they don't perform very well. So um, I'm actually, it's actually a really good test because I'm not sure how performant this thing is um, and whether, um, obviously I probably wouldn't trust my life uh, to a Raspberry Pi uh, running from an SD card, um, which seems to be <laughs> more often than not the problem with uh, a Raspberry Pi. Um, when things go wrong with them, it's usually the SD card that uh, becomes corrupt and they kind of stop working. Um, anyway, uh, there are many other single board computers out there that, are, that perform much better than a Raspberry Pi, especially a, a Model 2B like this one. Um, so that being said, um, even though it's a crappy old Raspberry Pi, you can see that the, the numbers and everything here are actually working um, not, too, not too bad. Everything's pretty smooth, everything's moving. Um, let me switch really quick to the engine monitor page here. Um, you can see that information's there. Um, oil temperature, it's uh, apparently risen a little bit in temperature in my garage. We're up to 90.1 degrees now. If I touch that sensor, you see it's rising. If I let it back down again, it's uh, going to go back down. Um, if I just go to the AOA uh, sensor here, that's just kind of the base. Uh, this was my test page just to see if I could get it to, to superimpose over the top of any, any screen at all. Um, and now if we go back to the uh, PFD here, it may take a second to load. Um, and all that's still happening. I can still move my uh, angle of attack sensor. The, it's moving up and down. It's maybe a quarter second delay or something like that, but it's, it's still holding on. Uh, um, I could uh, 
Let me set this all the way up so it's kind of high and I'll push the white button here and you can see that it will reset back to zero. Um, and then I'll move it back down and set it to zero again. Um, yeah, so everything is, is working as it was on my laptop. It's probably just a hair slower. Um, and again, I, I, you know, this is a crappy old Raspberry Pi. It's probably only got like one gig of RAM, if that. I'm not even sure what the, the 2B has. Um, but there are some really high powered um, single board computers um, that would run a Linux kernel with no problem and would definitely run this without any issues at all. Anyway, let's talk about hardware. Um, this screen, the touch screen, I paid, I think it was $80 for, it's a seven inch um, color touch screen. Uh, the resolution on it is 1024 by, I think it's 600. And then we have several um, Arduino devices. Uh, I believe this one was probably, uh, probably $20 or something like that. Uh, I'd have to look again. Um, so this device is $20. The, uh, the thermometer and barometer um, chip here was probably, I don't know, $5 or $10 or something like that. Um, this um, Arduino Nano, um, that one and this one are the same. I think I, they cost about $5 each. Um, these buttons here, I don't know, I probably bought them for several dollars. They were sitting in a, in a box in my house that I'd used for a different project before. Um, I, I'm sure I didn't spend more than $20 on a box of you know 30 of those or something. Um, these CAN interfaces here that interface with the Arduino, um, I don't remember exactly what I paid for them, but I think it was probably like, I don't know, $10 a piece or something like that. Um, and the, the more expensive one was this one um, that I have plugged into the laptop or um, Raspberry Pi in this case. The USB one here I think was like $35 um, for that interface. Um, they, they sell them a little bit cheaper than that, but um, I liked the interface. I liked that it had the uh, DB9 connection here um, for, for working with later. Um, so I would say all in, all of these different parts, the Raspberry Pi on there I bought probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. Um, and probably paid $30 or $35 for that. Um, so all for everything that's here on this desk right now, apart from the laptop obviously, but um, for all of the hardware to make this simple um, Raspberry Pi FE system here, uh, I probably have $200 um, for everything that's here. So compare that price, you know, maybe $200, something like that, compared to what I saw when I was at Sun and Fun, um, which again, could have been upwards of, you know, 15, 20, 30 thousand dollars, depending on what kind of equipment you wanted to put in your airplane. I mean, that's that's a pretty good bargain. Um, it will take a little bit of time to to in, implement everything that you want in there. You'll have to do some write some code and things like that. Um, but it's a, it's overall it's a pretty cool system. And uh, I've got some uh, sensors on the way. I've actually uh, ordered a couple of uh, air pressure differential sensors. Um, I think that they were like uh, 35 bucks a piece or something like that. Um, but they're high-end, high high-quality ones um, that you could actually use for a, a pedostatic sensor system. Um, I'm going to do some testing on it, obviously, to see how it works. Um, and I'd like to actually build an angle of attack sensor out of about two of those sensors. So one of them for a pedostatic system, another one for uh, you know the pressure differential type of uh, angle of attack sensor. I'm going to build one of those as well, just to kind of see how it works and um, maybe implement that as well. Anyway, thanks Phil and the guys at MakerPlane um, for all your, your efforts and making this such a cool product. Um, I'm looking forward to actually probably putting this in my airplane when I'm done working on it. Um, even if it's just a secondary uh, display uh, with some secondary sensors and things like that, um, I think it's it's a viable solution. It's, it's really pretty cool. Um, and again, it's open source, so if you're a developer and you know how to write uh, Python and or uh, C code for Arduinos, uh, you can really do some cool stuff with this uh, this little system here. Anyway, uh, thanks for following along. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, consider subscribing and uh, share with your friends. And uh, let's make this uh, a popular product out there for uh, for builders like me and you. Uh, hopefully, you're a builder as well, or at least uh, considering that idea. And uh, so we'll sign off here, and uh, we'll see you next time.